for the next 24 hours, I'll be learning on how to script in Roblox Studio. I'm going to be using multiple working methods on how to learn scripting super fast to hopefully become a scripting god by the end of the video. Myself, I barely have any knowledge in scripting, so this is going to be super fun and useful. By the end of the video, I need to make a hobby with only scripts. That means I can't place any parts, and everything has to be done through scripts. Just already imagine mowing a part with only code. Yeah, this is going to be fun. Will I become a scripting god or completely fail? Stay tuned to find out. So I started off by just doing what pretty much everyone would do. Use YouTube. You can learn pretty much anything on YouTube nowadays. So I searched up the fastest method to learn scripting. I found a video by Smarty that claimed that it will teach me beginner level scripting. And I watched it all the way through. After watching Smarty's video, I have learned the basics of scripting. I'm going to quickly resume what I learned. So print statements can be used to find the error in your code, and can be used with string values, boolean values, and number values. Nil in scripting basically equals nothing. With instances, you can insert any object inside of Roblox Studio. Remember, I need to make my own obby with only scripts, so I'm going to be using instances a lot. Alright, if statements can be used if you want to check for something. For example, if the part is anchored, then print, the part is anchored, and if it's not, you can use else, for example, to destroy the part. Events. No, not those type of events. Roblox Studio events. There are a lot of them, and you can find them in the Roblox Studio object browser, but the most useful one is touched. You can use it to detect when someone touches a part. You can use a while loop to loop through a part of a code while something is set to true. For example, this code is going to loop until test is set to true, then using break it will stop looping through the code. I'm almost ready to start creating the obby, but there is one more secret method that nobody really knows about. It's a Roblox game called LOA Learning. So what do we have here? We have tutorials submitted by actual Roblox scripters and players. This game offers multiple lessons starting from the basics to the intermediate level. I already know the basics, so I moved on to the second chapter. Print two statements. First, check the type of any string value, then check the type of a boolean value. Yeah, I'm so proud that I was able to do the task in the first try. Let's just skip the boring part, but for the next hour, I spent my time completing all of these tasks. Now it was time for the fun part. The game offers fun quests that you need to solve with code. Let's first of all make a function. The player move forward. Yeah, to be honest, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't think there's even a function like this in Roblox. So I try to take a different approach, and it actually works. Equipped with the best knowledge, I can finally start creating my obby. So we are finally ready to create our obby. And I can use only scripts. That means I cannot insert parts, I cannot color them, and everything has to be done through scripts. So I started my journey by creating a new script called Part Spawner. I wrote a code to spawn in a part inside of Workspace, but it didn't go as planned. Um, where is our part? Also remember, I have to make a wall obby like this. I guess you can add print statements, so... I actually don't know what I'm doing. Then I was doing something completely unnecessary, and I didn't realize the part was already there. Okay, I finally realized I need to anchor the part and set its position to something. Oh, it's a vector3 value. I got it. So I fixed up the error and used vector3.new and set the part size to 5, 1, 10. Yo, it actually works. Let's go. After what felt like ages, I finally made a decent spawn location and now I can move on to make the stages. I tried making a new script for each one of the parts and adjust the x, y, and z axis. I mean it worked, but it wasn't effective, so I merged all of the scripts together into one big script. So I think this is going to be it for the first stage. You know what, let's actually get rid of the base plate. Script parent destroy. Then I inserted the new script for the second stage and I was so confused on how to make the platform spawn in the right place. The size. Okay, this should work. Hopefully. Yeah, let's go. It works. Why is the first jump so big? And now it's so small. But I would want to add checkpoints later. I'm right. I did add checkpoints later. But they took me ages to make. 
This already hurts my brain. I cannot even see the obby and it's so hard. I tried adjusting the size and position for the first obstacle on the second stage, but yeah, something was wrong. Now the whole game is not working, great. Oh my bad, I can't insert a new instance called stage, it has to be a part. I need to somehow find the center of this part, and I need to measure it in studs so I can... Yeah, it's way too complicated. Yeah, as you can tell, everything was going downhill, until I actually fixed the part, and I was so hyped, I don't know why. Next, I needed to add the kill bricks, so I adjusted the size and colored them bright red. Yo, it's actually neon! Now I think we should space out the next ones by around, let's say, 6 studs. So I copied the script a bunch of times and made each part 6 studs further away. Let's go, now I need to make the kill parts actually kill you. So, player, touched, dot, connect. I don't know what I'm doing, to be honest. I was still a pretty big noob at scripting, but I have already learned a lot, since I was able to create the function after a couple of attempts. Yo, it works! Let's go! Finally! So now we need to create the third stage. Let's insert a new script for that. So then I copied the spawn location part and adjusted the position to place it at the end of the second stage. For the third stage, I wanted to try to rotate the part minus 45 degrees, and it turned out pretty nice, so I copied them a bunch of times and adjusted the position a bit to finally finish the stage. On to the next stage, so let's name this script stage 4. I took the spawn location from the first stage and messed around with the position to place it at the start of the fourth stage. I could try to make something interesting for the fourth stage, like those fading platforms that slowly fade until you fall right through. So let's copy this. So let's for the size, let's do something like I'd say 40 times 20. Then for the position, let's do 60. And this should work, let's see. Yeah, it didn't work, so I had to change up the position a bit. I tried writing a fading script, but to be honest, I had no clue what I was doing. So lost right now. While I was looking through the Roblox Creator Hub, I found the perfect script for my game. It had just what I needed, the fade function. So I added the function to my code and tested it out. Let's quickly do our obby. I need shift lock. No! Now it should start slowly fading? Yeah, this is straight up impossible, so I changed the weight variable to something a little bit higher. So let's see if we can walk over in time. Yeah, it's doable now. To get the spawn location for the fifth stage, I just copied the first script and moved the platform 13 studs in the air. I mean, it looks alright. For the fifth stage, I wanted to make this obstacle where you have to jump from one ball to another ball. So I tried writing a script for that that spawns in a spear. But it wasn't really working, so I looked it up on the Roblox dev forum and I found this script that I'm going to use. Yeah, this is absolutely perfect. For stage 5, let's copy a lot of these balls. Then I wanted to test out the new stage, but it didn't go as planned. Oh my god, why can't I do my own obby? Yeah, I wish I could add admin commands, but I cannot place any parts. Let's just pretend that never happened. Yo, finally we're up here. And these jumps are impossible. Okay, for the sixth stage I want to do something harder. Because each stage gets progressively more difficult, so I tried spawning a one stud jump. Okay. Uh, nope, it's the wrong direction. I fixed the problem by changing its direction, and I copy and pasted it a lot of times, making each part two studs higher in there. What did I even make right here? Why is that one so far away? Yeah, I might have accidentally set the part's position to 200 instead of 20. Now it looks a lot better. The stage wasn't fully complete yet, so I copied these parts a bunch of times and made the spawn location for the seventh stage. Let's go! Finally, something is working. Okay, I don't know what happened to my footage, but making the 7th stage took ages. It was so hard to spawn in the kill bricks in the right areas. Then I tried spawning in the next platform, and this happened. Okay, I'm genuinely confused. How did I even make this? I accidentally set the size to 41 instead of the position, so now it should be fixed. Yeah, there we go. For the 8th stage, I'm going to make it very simple. It's going to be just one part, but there's a catch. It's going to be rotating, and it's going to be very hard to balance on. 
I try to copy the function from the fourth stage and changing the transparency to orientation. But yeah, as you can see it's not rotating, so I have to take a different approach on how to resolve this. So I try to use C-frame to rotate the part, but yeah, let me just show you what happened. Let's go, I'm finally at the top, please work. No. Then I switched back to using Vector3.new and also added a task.wait so the game doesn't crash. And guess what we have to do again? We have to complete this wall obby again. First of all, I don't want it to rotate this way. Second of all, it's rotating super slow. I was getting frustrated because I couldn't make the part spin correctly. Until I decided to make the code null what is the part's position and then make it rotate. Now it should work. Which means for the 100th time, I have to complete this goddamn obby. Yo, it's actually working. It's rotating how it should. Now I just needed the end platform, so I copied the first spawn location and placed it 42 studs in the air. Now we have 8 stages that are completely made with only code. I don't even know how I made all of this, but... Now I want to add checkpoints. I don't even know if that's possible, but we'll have to see. So to do that, I have to figure out a system to spawn all of the checkpoints inside of a folder and make them to be on the top of the big platform. I started off by inserting a checkpoints folder, which will contain all of the checkpoints. And I tried to insert a port, but for some reason, it wasn't in the checkpoints folder, so I tried to adjust the position and name it stage 1. Yeah, there is an error, but luckily I just misspelled vector 3. I continued on to insert new checkpoints for each one of the stage, and colored them red. They look pretty cool, but now we have to make them work. So I started off by just writing a simple later stat script that inserts a folder and an int value. But also, I need a script that updates your leader stats and makes you respawn on the checkpoint. So I try to loop through all of the checkpoints and add plus one value to the player's leader stats. Player added is not a valid member of players. Yeah, I got an error, but I figured it out and it was just a typo. I misspelled player added. Yeah, the folder is not getting created. Oh, I literally just forgot to do this to stage, I just copied the whole part of the script and I forgot to rename it to stage. Finally, the leader stats folder got created, but there was a bigger problem that was coming in my way. Yeah, it looks like we have a slight problem. Plus, if we reset, um, yeah, we're back at here. Boom, we don't need that script anymore, and I'm going to write a completely new one. This one will move the character to the checkpoint and hopefully won't go crazy on adding values. Shoot, there are already a couple of errors I need to fix. So after a little bit of thinking, I figured out what I need to do. In my checkpoints handler script, the checkpoints were named stage 1, stage 2, and etc. You know, but I need to name them like 1, 2, 3, and etc. It should work like that. Oh my god, my spelling is so awful today. I pray that it works now. Why am I already at the first stage? Oh, come on. I tried to resolve this in many ways, well, the first one was to name the first spawn location 0, and pray that it works. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Then I tried to add a part on top of the spawn location, and name it 0. The part is invisible, but it acts like the first checkpoint. Yeah, now we are spawning properly, and please, I hope the checkpoint system will work. We got the value, and now if we reset... Yo, it actually works! I'm so relieved now, this took ages to make, let's go. I'm now glad that the checkpoint system works, but you know what would be cool? If there was a button that a player needed to click to spawn in the obby. Yeah, this idea was great, but nearly impossible. I tried inserting the button through a screen GUI, I mean, that was working, but making it actually spawn the obby was quite impossible. I tried everything, looping through all of the parts and making them invisible, Disabling enabling scripts, adding weight variables to stop the scripts, but nothing worked. Even though this idea was amazing, I just couldn't do it. Usually I would stay up till 3am to fix the issue, but this time, there was a time limit, and the time was running out. Okay, enough with the dramatic stuff, but it was sad that I couldn't make it work. But that's when I got an even better idea. I will make animals fall right from the sky, and players will have to dodge them to complete the hobby. So I added a new script in server script service, and I don't know why I named it anchor falling script. It should have been anvils instead of anchors. Anyways, I used the while loop and math.random to spawn parts randomly in the air. But it wasn't as easy as it seems. 
Sir skipped service. Attempt to compare number to nil. My bad, I forgot to set the part count to zero. The code was working, but it wasn't spotting the anvils in the right place, so I changed up the code a little bit, and yeah, this happened. Yo, what? As you can see, the code needed a lot of adjustments, so I changed the math.random values, and also made the script wait for 4 seconds, and then destroy all of the anvils. Otherwise, it would just crash the game. Yeah, the parts are spawning way too fast, so I made the script wait for 0.3 seconds. And with that, my obby is finally done. If you want to play it, I will leave a link in the description. So after 24 hours, did I really become a scripting god? Well, kind of. I learned a lot on this journey, but as a wise man once said, there's always room for improvement.